Hey friends, welcome to Solid Mechanics. This class is the class normally taken right after statics, okay? At your university, this might be called something different. My university is called Solids. Uh, it might be called Strengths of Materials. That's actually what it was called back in the day when I took it, back when the dirt was still shiny. You might call it Strengths. Um, they may call it Mechanics of Materials. That's what the book is actually called for this uh for, for this course. Um, deformable bodies, this is the first time that, in, that things move and bend and, and break, right? In statics, they didn't do that, but it, and they do in this class. Or it might be called mechanics too. So there's kind of lots of names for this course. But if, you're, if your uh, class is called any of these things, then this is the course for you. It's the same course. Um, and you can follow along with this video series, just like you did for statics. And I got you, man. I got you. Okay. So for solid mechanics, I always recommend that this is the next student, the next course that my students take, uh, because it is so heavily uh, coupled with statics. Okay. Every solids problem is going to start off with find global equilibrium. So y'all know what that means, right? For for a question like this, right? This is just a little simple truss problem, right? So. But, not a truss, a beam. But what you have to do, right? You've got to be able to convert a distributed load into a concentrated load. Um, you've got to remember the reactions at the support. So you would have a BY, and you would have over here an AY and an AX, right? And you should be able to remember how to come up with those. I've got to take the moment at A to find BY, then come back and sum the force in the Y to find AY. The first step in every solids problem is going to be just like that, okay? So if, if you're weak at statics or you just barely pass statics, you know, it would pay you dividends to go back to my statics series on YouTube and review those videos because it will get you a better foundation in statics, okay? So if you just kind of go through those. Because, man, if you're going to struggle on the global equilibrium portion of this, then this class is going to punch you in the face, okay? So, you know, something like finding the reactions, the global stuff here. I expect that that should take my students about two minutes to do. You ought to be like, bam, I know how to do that from the other class. Wham, I got it, you know? And if you're struggling with this still, I don't remember which is cosine and which is sine. This class is fixing to kick your hiney, okay? So, get prepared, okay? And so... uh you know, one of the things I want to do is start off with something simple here. Uh, the very first problems in the solids book are nothing more than a review of classes from statics. So I thought it would be best. Let's just start off with one little um, statics problem. Let's see if we remember how to do this. And we'll work through something like this. Find the internal forces at point B. Here's point B right there. So let's see if we remember how to do this right quick. And this will be a good review. And then the next video... We're going to start off with some new things. Now, statics, all the equations, we just made them up as we went along, right? In solids, there are a lot of equations. There's a lot of equations. And so uh, it's important that you stay up with this. It is a harder class. Uh, I promise you that. So let's see if we can do this. I'm going to erase some of this, give us some room, and let's see if we can work this problem out here. All right, y'all hadn't go and gotten soft on me. Have you? Do you remember what this guy here is? What is that guy? That's a two-force member, pin connected at both ends, no forces in the middle, two-force member. I remember those guys, okay? You got to remember all of this stuff, right? Because Johnny Weeks sauce, he says, hey, man, pin connection there, pin connection there, that's four unknowns. I can't solve this, but we're like, no, Johnny Weeks sauce, that's not two unknowns. That's one unknown because a two-force member takes you from two unknowns to one unknown. I learned that in Dr. Hansen's statics class, yo. Okay, step one to solve this, this problem, to find internal forces at point B, is to, to solve for global equilibrium, right? So let's draw a free body diagram. Okay, so here's that beam, the top beam up there. And the two-force member, we'll call him FDC, right? Do you think he's in tension or compression? This whole thing is pulling down, so he's squeezing him, so what's his reaction to me? Ugh, push back, right? So here he is, FDC, pushing back on me, okay? 
And then over here at point A, that's a pin connection. So you've got an AY and an AX. And then up here, what do you have? Well, you have a distributed load. So we're gonna turn that distributed load into a concentrated load. Do you remember how to do that? It's a uh, one half base times height, so one half. The height is a thousand. And the base is six plus four, that's 10. So that is 5,000 pounds, okay? So let's put that here, okay? And we know that that distance has to be at one third the base, which is uh, 10 over three, right? This little distance right here, 10 over three feet, right? which is 3.33333, right? No, yes, just 3.333 feet, okay? So let's do this. Which way does AY go? I think it goes up. Which way does AX go? Since that guy goes to the right, I think he has to go to the left, okay? And, you know, if it was up to me, I think what I'd do is take the sum of the moments at point A, and I would have 5,000 rotating me negative minus 5,000 times 3.33. And then this guy has two components over here. Oh no, we're gonna have to do an angle. What is this angle right there? Well, let's see, I got a big triangle that's, um, I got a big triangle. It's got five on that side and it's got uh, 10, 12 on that side. Um, I don't know what that is, do you? On, let's see, how about uh, tangent, right? Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So five divided by 12 equals inverse tan of that equals 22.62. Okay, 22.62 degrees. So let's see, I'm changing colors. My purple is, blue is not doing so good. So this is 22.6. So this guy over here is FDC sine 22.6. This guy, FDC cosine 22.6, okay? And this guy's a cha-cha force, isn't he? What you He goes right through point A, so he's knocked out. This one rotates me positive, so plus FDC sine 22.6 times how far away? It's the whole length of the beam, it's 12. Okay, so here we go. We're fixing to get FDC, aren't we? 5,000 times 3.33 equals divided by 12 equals divided by the sine of 22.6. So FDC is equal to 3,610.5 pounds. Okay. There's one thing that's going on, and now I can find these two guys over here, right? Some of the forces in the X. And so I get... Uh, 3610.5, right, times the cosine 22.6 is equal to AX. So AX is equal to 3610.5 cosine of 22.6 equals. 33, 33.25. That's pounds, okay? And then of course, uh, a Y, pretty easy to find a Y. Some of the force in the Y. And in the Y, I've got a Y. I got that guy, plus 36.10.5. Sine 22.6, and then I got this guy 
minus 5,000. So a y is equal to 5,000 minus 3610.5 times the sine of 22.6. 3,612.5. So there's the first bit of stuff that I need, right? FDC, um, 3610.5. AY, 3612.5. AX, AX, where'd you go AX? There he is. 33, 33.25. Mm. Okay. So there's step one. I got global equilibrium. What's the next? Is there more? Yeah, we haven't even found out what's going on point B yet. Let me erase this. Let's do that. All right, so how do I find out what's going to point B? Remember, we cut it, right? We cut the beam. You can draw the right side or you can draw the left side. I think I'm just going to draw the left side. So here I go. Here's the beam. Okay. What's on that beam? Well, there's a distributed load that kind of looks like that. And then over here at A... I've got this, right? I've got 3612.5. And I've got this guy, which is 3333.25. And then what else do I have? Well, what happens when you cut a beam? Do you remember? Of course you do. You must have an M and B. Right? Here's your N. Uh, here's your V. We drew the left side. You don't want to get left at Walmart or you'll feel down. And then here's your M. Remember, that's from our positive sign convention. Okay? Now, at point B, can, do we know how tall this curve is at point B? Well, yes, we can do similar triangles and figure that out, can't we? So over here, we say 1,000 is to 10 as 4 is to, we'll call it y. That's how tall the curve is over here, isn't it? Because I'm just talking about this triangle versus the big triangle. It's similar triangles, y'all. Okay, so what is that going to be? 4,000 divided by 10 is 400. So y equals 400. So this height right here is 400 which means that this height over here has to be 600 because it's 1,000 on that end over there, right? And we know this distance here is 6, right? So just the triangle part is going to be 1 half base times height. 6 times 600 is 3,600 divided by 2 is 1,800. And the rectangle part down here is 400 tall by 6 wide. That's going to be 2,400. So I'm going to treat it as like two concentrated loads there, right? Because it's a triangle stacked on top of a rectangle. Okay. All right. Let's find the things, right? This is going to be pretty easy. How big is N going to be? Well, how much other stuff do you see in the X direction? Because I only see one. So right away, N is equal to 3,333.25. There's one of the three things that we have to find. We're trying to find the internal force at point B. Number two, how do we find V? Well, how about sum of the forces in the Y? So what do we get? We get sum of the forces in the Y equals negative V minus 1,800 plus 2,400. That's what? 3,400, 4,200? And then plus 3612.5. Okay. 
So we're gonna get a negative number for V, aren't we? Yes, we are. All right. And so what do we get? We get uh, 4,200 minus 3612.5. So we're gonna get V is equal to negative 587.5 pounds, okay? Well, what does that mean? Well, it just means that I, the positive sign convention said V should go down, but really V on this side of the free body should go up. So that's no big deal. So V, negative 587.5 pounds. And one more, that is what is M? Well, we can get that guy by taking the sum of the moments. I'm gonna take the sum of the moments at point B where we cut it. And what do we get? We take the sum of the moments here. We knock out N and V, but we don't, you can't knock out a moment. So that's gonna be a positive M. I drew it as a positive moment. The 2400 rotates me positive. So plus 2400 times how far away? Well, from the cut, which is here to where that moment is, which is half a six, it's three, isn't it? Okay plus 1800 times how far away is that guy? Well, remember, it's a center of a triangle, so this is one-third the base. So if the whole thing is six, then this must be, um, what's the third of six? Two, right? Two over here, which is four from that end over there, isn't it? Four. And then the 33, 33, whoo he gets knocked out. He goes through this point B over there. And then the 3612 rotates me negative. Minus 3612.5 times how far away? Six. Okay, so here we go. So 3612.5 times six minus 1800 times four minus 2400 times three equals. 7,275. The moment at point B is equal to 7,275 what? What? Foot pounds. And there are your internal forces at point B. So just a little statics review. Why did you have to pick such a hard one? Well, it's not that hard. Can you remember how to do it? I mean, this is going to be like, I'm going to expect you to already know how to do this part of it. If you're struggling on this, this is going to be an unpleasant situation for you to be in, okay? So, come on, y'all, study hard and let's, let's knock this class out. All right, next, next video is going to start with some solid stuff, I promise you.